Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, hope you're having a lovely day. Now, I've got a very special video, this has been one I've been working on for a little while, and it's my How To Be Cavalier Guide, in the most easiest way possible. Champion choices, best paths, best strategies, tactics that are necessary, and as well, just logical based things. Let's get into this. Now there's obviously so many things to bear in mind, but I would largely say it's always important to understand, get your boosts on if you're feeling that your champions aren't strong enough. And yes, there's gonna be some amazing god tier champions to look out for. Whether or not you have awakened or unawakened versions, look out for the amazing usage of the following. Blade, Stark Spidey, Ghost Rider in that lovely little synergy, but also Ghost Rider by himself. Hyperion, Medusa, Iceman, Doctor Doom, Mr. Fantastic, Namor, Cat Marvel movie, Nick Fury, Ghost, Aegon and Quake and so many other champions you could possibly use to do easy clearing of different types of lanes. And preparation wise when it comes to mastery setups, I don't think it really matters what mastery setup you indeed have. And let's face it, a lot of people will work around with things with suicide masteries when you have certain champions that work quite well like Ghost, like Warlock, like so many other champions. Like Black Widow, Clairvoyant, the list goes on of really handy, high damage outputting champions with Suicide Masteries. But as well, you can have a standard build, regardless if you're looking to exercise more Mystic Dispersion, whether or not you're kind of focused more on offense. The fact is, there's so many Masteries out there that would definitely benefit you, regardless of your playing style. It is up to you at the end of the day, which Mastery setup you choose. Now a lot of you might know on the 31st of January I did a video and said that my target was to by the end of February 100% act 6.1 without spending a single cent and just using free grinding with arena and so far so good. By the time this video is released, it may be a case that I've done this 100% of 6.1 but it's definitely got me thinking about strategies of how, how to get an easy cavalier. But obviously do bear in mind that you might want to grind out some arena milestones. Have about 300 to 1000 units behind your back when you think about starting off this. For a lot of you, you may find that Act 6.1 is fairly easy and that's great. But there will be some paths that are really tricky, but at the same time, that will be safe for another guide. Let's focus on the easiest way to get Cavalier. The global node for this particular 6.1.1 is no retreat and no retreat is annoying when the attacker dashes backwards they gain dj timer for 1.2 seconds dashing back again while the dj time is active causes a passive dj dealing 200 percent of the defender's attack as direct damage over five seconds annoying and even though there are champions that interact quite well with this dj i would largely say that you won't have them so let's focus on the just general strategy for this it is annoying. This is one of the ones that I didn't like as much as some of the other ones. Actually, this one and 6.1.2 were the more frustrating in my opinion. But I would say with this one, there are some standout champions. And that is going to be Archangel and Domino with the Incinerate Synergy. Now, you may not have them and it is five star related. So you may have to utilize certain champions outside your normal usage. And it may be a case you might go with your strong lead champion and then try and force yourself through. Also, I would advise planning your routes and planning your paths. Yes, there is an easy path to go down. And I personally felt that the route going down with Joe Fixit, going with Rocket and then going across to, uh, to Red Hulk and then down, I felt that this route here was probably the easiest route. And it's just that I know the champions SP1s and SP2s a lot more than I normally would have. And as well, utilizing some more kind of aggressive champions and aggressive play. A lot of the times I was using Archangel to clear a lot of the paths and especially that is handy when it comes to the end boss. And I'm not saying everybody has uh, an Archangel but there are different options whether or not you use persistent based persistent based attack champions like Corvuses, like your Cat Marvel movies. I kind of felt that that was maybe the point I wanted to overpower against what I went against. But as well, if you want to utilize certain champions that uh, are more aggressive and are resistant more, that's something you could utilize. If you're thinking to yourself, right, well, mastery wise, is there anything that can work out with here? Well, if you want to utilize staying in a block for a lot of the time and being up close and personal, like with Omega Red, then you could do something where you uh, you have resist on your defense options right at the very end here. Stand your ground can allow you more of a chance to resist a, uh, a block, but look, 
you're changing a mastery round for one specific fight and maybe it's a case of just being aggressive against that particular champion sp1 is the main thing but do watch out you can do little micro evades like little kind of dashes backwards but not full amounts of that try and be more of like you're utilizing parry and maybe that's the case you want to look at your proficiencies that again are many, many situated in that prolonging that particular stun and doing things with like your pacifies with your petrifies with your stupefies etc etc also another thing could be about power control if you're a bit worried about having it difficult about power controlling then you might want to look at champions like hawkeye psylocke dr doom that could be beneficial especially with bringing down the extent of uh, of fury buffs this champion gets Special delivery and combo party. Now, this is Act 6.1.2. And look, the fact is, this wasn't too bad, but it's just the end boss that's frustrating, especially when it comes to things like evade. And I would say the champion pair up is going to be quite important. For me, I did get a little bit frustrated and decided instead of going on my usual setup, where I was like, look, the end boss has got EMP, EMP modification, and I was thinking like, yo, with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring Cat Marvel movie and just like build up and ramp up with those uh, that shock that's going to be able to power up her binary and the binary charge is going to be able to like do a lot of damage in very quick bursts. And that worked well because, again, I lost my patience with it. I got frustrated. But it was good as well to consider there's other champion options. You could use champions that interact well with shock damage. And like I said, Doctor Doom is always going to be this kind of good new champion that's really effective especially considering that he's immune to shock and can be really nice against his enemy nullifying certain buffs that pop up from time to time and as well making sure you suppress as much of the incoming uh, attack and also like you know reducing down power of the enemy that's again the, the most important thing here also, because this is a champion that is a robot, Medusa works quite well with this. Also, do consider like other options. There's so many far out options for this particular boss interaction. You could even think about the war, like Warlock, to be an example as well. And that again could be a good example when going up against the likes of Sentinel. And with Sentinel, again, this is one of these ones where because it has Biohazard, you can interact well with a champion like Ghost. You've got certain ones like Morningstar, Dormammu. Iceman, you do have to work hard in order to keep up the damage for the arc overload, which look, let's face it, is going to be a little bit annoying, but there are some really cool options, you know, with Clairvoyant in particular could be a quite cool option. Also, don't undermine the fact of usage of Quake, and especially in this circumstance, using Quake may be a really fun option. Now, easy paths. Which are the easy paths? Well, it depends on what champion you're bringing in. If you've got Dr. Doom, then the top path here with all the cosmics could be a really good option with power control and obviously the power and the kind of like uh, interaction with being a class advantage is a kind of cool option. If you want to go down the tech line, then obviously using a champion like Medusa could be very effective when it comes to the Dane, a Bane of uh, Dambala. So there are options based on a certain champion you bring in, and I think it's important just to read up what is there. I use Blade to clear off the science one and again it's using like class advantage to the to the advantage of the situation so it's up to you you can do path clearing with a domino with the uh, red hulk incinerate synergy as those are things that make things a little bit easier obviously with combo party look we're screaming at the usage of Aegon squirrel girl could be a good option i don't have as a fire so i would love to try her out and obviously don't undermine the potential for a guillotine 2099 on this situation so yeah there's a lot on offer if you've got it to blast through the lanes Okay, next up we're on 6.1.3, long distance relationship. So in a nutshell, keep your distance, it's bad. Stay up close, it's good. So that's the one thing to kind of mention with the main M boss being Ghost, a very straightforward and easy champion to go up against, which is nice. I would probably say if you want to keep things as easy as possible, you need a high bleeding or very quick to bleed type champion, especially to go around and have a work around with this thing fight here, which essentially is like the Sentinel of 6.1. Point two. So I always take a blade in with me, but obviously there are so many other options of champions that will bleed very easily. Whether or not that's going to be just the, you know, we could even say like Deadpool X Force, just going to go up against this fight to keep the bleeds down. But I'm sure people will find a way around this thing fight. Either way, long distance relationship. What's this, what's the deal with this? Because it looks very extensive. 
Well, what you can do, and what I didn't realize until like a little bit into this when I 100 percented it, is that you can actually go on a massive spiral and actually do this with about like one, two times. I would say though, this lane here is the biggest frustration. But Iceman was the best option for it. I would say largely wait off until you've got an Iceman or another type of champion. Just going to overpower this. If you are worried worried about like th this, like you use boosts, especially to get rid of the fact that uh, Sprite, Gas, Stun Immunity is it, really annoying. Yeah, you can have champions that have got good um, evade counter options, but sometimes people won't always have that. So that's something to bear in mind. True accuracy, true strike can be very nice. You get your Venoms. I don't have a five-star Venom, but maybe that could be a cool option. But look, we're talking about easy paths here. I know literally we'll be going down, doing the Old Man Logan fight, then doing the Vision Age of Ultron fight, going up here where Deadpool is, going round there and coming down and obviously doing that to fight with a thing and then later on think about the way that you want to do this and i would recommend to go as wide as possible or even go the uh, the lane down here and grabbing that because at the end of the day you will go up you'll go down you'll go down again and when you come to here you then can go down and around and then up again and then pick up this fight as you go along. And again, I would say leave this path to, path to last, or maybe until you are just about to 100% act 6.1.6, .6, and then yeah, come back and 100% this. The fight with the end boss, again, is nothing to worry about. It's limber. If you can remember just to kind of like absorb stuff into your block, then come back out, go back in again. And I would say the main strategy would be to kind of get up close and just do a lot of debuff damage, but try and make sure the enemy doesn't go into phase, which obviously, as we know, if Ghost goes into phase, then it's just a case of like she'll absorb all those um, lovely debuffs and turn them into what she will consume as being lovely buffs. And then obviously that won't be too great. So make sure to do maybe a little bit of class advantage, I loved using Medusa. I think I even did like the incinerate synergy and just cheesing through that. And that's one thing I would say if you're doing long path grinds, then the incinerate synergy or maybe high debuff champions, your Omega Reds, your um, Archangels, your Icemans, etc., etc., can be really helpful. And yeah, don't kind of undermine the fact of the use of the Corvus. Next up in 6.1.4, close encounters. So yes, get in close for the regen. Get up close and personal with any enemy you go up against. And I would say champions that have, again, and this is handy, if you've got that resist, kind of stand your ground, resist of the block break, that is actually going to be quite effective, especially considering that you can get continuously up close and personal and be able to, yeah, minimize the extent of, of the degen, but also maximize the extent of the regen that you'll be able to get. And I would say this is mainly a one for Blade. I've been rocking the synergy that's Mystic Interaction. So there's a lot of lanes where that's that's applicable to use. And I would say, yeah, uh, keeping him alive and he's been able to one-shot this Loki. Very, very straightforward fight. Um, I would say as well, watch out for the SP1. The SP1 is going to be unblockable. And my strategy with this was to stay into the block after I did a five hit combo. So either I was doing five hit combo, going straight into the block, or I was going five hit combo, hit with an SP1. And I repeat that until he was doing the block break. And when he was doing that, I was swiping back, swiping back in again, building, 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 and going to block. Why do I want to go into the block? Well, it tricks the AI. The AI is more inclined to throw the SP1 if you are just a little bit static and if you're kind of baiting it out. That may not be the method in which you want to use. You want to be aggressive, but also go into a block so the SP, uh, SP1 doesn't get thrown. As the SP2, I think, is a little bit more easier. It's not a projectile. It's more of a come towards you move. And you're able to kind of look at it a little bit more, dictate it. I always find off the SP1, and I've seen so many players doing this, where they swipe back, swipe back in again, and they can't punish on the special after the special's been thrown. And it's been something that, you know, it's just where the, the game is, unfortunately. And I, I like guarantees. So the SP2 for me is a lot easier to avoid, so I would recommend that. And also some ideal champions. You've got Doctor Doom, aggressive power control could be a good option, but Blade for me was the ideal. You've got Beardo, hit into the block, get it charged up, um, get those, um, get those uh, kinetic charges up, smash them with a really high SP2 damage. Also, but you know, you've got to watch out for Dold with that. I mean, that's all well and good me saying that, but obviously, look, Dold 
Crit chance is reduced by 50% for each buff active um, on you and debuff active on your opponent. So obviously do watch out for that. Um, even though it's not classed as a buff, in Bunny is buff, um, it's still a passive buff. So I don't know if there's any interaction there, but it's worth checking out. A Mega Red can be a complete don to clear this, especially considering the fact that if you could be aggressive and, and get really close, you're regenning and as well you're doing an extensive amount of damage with uh, Death Field, with those spores, absolutely. Quake, yeah, you can keep your distance with Quake on this, but obviously do bear in mind you have to get past the fact that you're going to be evading back to the end and you have to be assured that the enemy is going to come with you and stick to you right close at the uh, the far left hand corner of uh, of the map so yes good but do watch out and yeah you can use your corvus glaive up until the point you get to the final fight and then you're like well it's class disadvantage do i want to do it you'll have to really see there's going to be certain lanes to go down that you will be a lot more easier than others and especially as you can see there's some without any kind of uh, node on them whatsoever apart from the global and that's largely from just doing the uh, the very quick movement to uh, to kind of the nearest portal as we can see here okay now on to a bit of a tricky one and that's act 6.1 Point five. This is the crossbones fight, which obviously is incredibly frustrating. And something to bear in mind with this one is we've got power struggle. The attacker cannot gain power during the fight through normal means. Each time the defender reaches a full bar of power, the attacker is granted one as well. And whenever the defender uh, launches a special attack, the attacker loses an equal amount. So a lot of the times you might have to rely on things like your your heavy attacks or maybe just like a bit of luck with getting a bit of power here or there. And there's going to be some really decent options. But at the same time, this will be uh, a tricky fight to say the least. Now, crossbones will come on to a minute, but easy path in order to get there. Again, difficult one. Because a lot of the times you may say, like, well, I wanna I wanna kinda get down this way into the end, and it may be a case of blade is the best fit for this far path, especially because in the first instance you want to be able to take down Bane or you want to take down the node that's currently present. Because there's nodes going into this guy, which isn't great, and the options are taking down Force of Will or Bane. And I would probably say you want to take down Bane first, which, look, that seems to be the easiest route to go down, especially with some of the champions being quite easier to kind of go up against. So this route here, taking, going down, going down, taking off Bane, and obviously the remainder of the ones I've got to do will largely involve the enemy getting Bane. Oh, what a fun time I'm going to have. And at the same time, there will be uh, there will be times when I've got both on with the... Um, Ability accuracy modifications being not there. Vigor is annoying. Biohazard is annoying. So it does mean that there's only be certain champions at the best. As we know, the SP1 of Crossbones is the easiest thing to evade. But I would largely say it's easier to get easiest to get here, but when it comes to it, there's going to be a lot of champions to consider. Colossus off that uh, that heavy attack, building up the armor, and then it's a case if you're able to do an SP2, then do it. Do the heavy attack, then straight into that SP2. Hopefully, see a big chunk of damage taken off the enemy. But also do bear in mind because it's biohazard, Colossus will get poison, so it's important not to hit the enemy whilst he's in the block. Iceman is a good champion but you will literally will have to put in the effort and be incredibly aggressive in order to make sure that you are over dam damaging against the enemy that vigor is going to come on quite strong and the fact that you know you need to just work hard is another element to something you need to work you need to work out how you're going to do it and you may be want to doing a method where you're throwing an sp2 in from time to time if you can if not it's all about applying as much frostbite as much cold snap as possible and just melt down the damage over a long space of time you've got the option of Aegon Aegon's a great champion if you've gone I don't have him awakened I've got him there as you can see but he's not awakened which is annoying because building up those combos going into that fight is vitally important otherwise it's just a waste of time just constantly doing it in that fight you get here once and you're like man I really wish I started off 999 hits prior to starting this fight off Ghost is a brilliant option because you swipe back, you phase any of the biohazard that you're building up. So look, it's a win-win situation. Clairvoyant is another good option, a fun option that interworks well with things like Suicide Mastery. He's making a really strong and at the same time, you know, the immunities from things like Poison and as well as Bleed are kind of important. 
Not to mention a Mega Red. A Mega Red is another really cool option, extensive amounts of debuff damage, and can be quite nice against the enemy. And there are some, is an iffy option with Iron Man Infinity War, but if I'm being honest, I, I just wouldn't recommend it. I'd largely say of a Mega Red, Clairvoyant, Ghost, Aegon, Warlock, Iceman, and Colossus being some really good hard hitters, fun hard hitters, and would be incredibly important going up against this fight. Now finally on to, well, the final fight. Now as you can see right down the very middle is going to be the unnoted champions to go up against. Hurt Locker is on using the same type of special attack twice in a row. Gives the attacker a delayed blast charge for 5 seconds which may be removed by landing a heavy attack. If the blast expires, the attacker takes 50% of their health as direct damage. Half the time I can't really concentrate enough to do the heavy attack. So I just make sure that I can switch between each special attack as I go. I just find that's more of an easier option for me to remember. But obviously you do you at the end of the day. Now when you come down to the end here, you do have an option to pair off. There are some other lanes here, but for me, I kind of felt that I wanted to go down and then go across, especially to something with Aspect of War and Strike Back, and I, I just kind of like, I preferred going down this route. I don't know why, I kind of felt this one was a little bit more straightforward, but there could be other routes. Again, that'd be beneficial for you to go down. I certainly didn't want to do this one, which is Delirium. The attacker's dash and dodge controls are inverted in this fight. Rogue Robots and champions with with psychic resistance are immune to this effect. So again, you might want to do thing put in certain champions a robot in order to go down that. If you've got a strong robot-based champion, especially like you know Warlock, maybe a case that you want to go down this route here, which has the armor break immunity, heavy-handed aggression armor. That one could be a little bit more straightforward for you, but obviously it's important to check out these lanes to the most strongest champion you possess, because again, that will be about where you want to go and how you want to structure that grind. Regardless of this, you may feel that you might want to change your champion selection. As you can see, nothing about Cosmic in this one, especially kind of going that, hey, well, Mutant Pursuit, reduce opponent's attack with special specials by 25% when facing a target of the Mutant class. You in the champion increases critical resistance by 25% when facing a target of the skill class. So look, there's loads of things here that will be detrimental and not to mention the fact it's being stun immune. And for this as well, Fisty Cuffs, neither champion can activate specials or debuffs for the first 30 seconds of the fight. So yeah, this is going to be a bit frustrating. First time I cleared this, I think I used the Medusa rank 4 and uh, that wasn't a great fight. And now I'm going back to it with a lot more champions. I've got a Corvus, but again, like I would say, and the champion selections to the left hand corner. This is where the difficulty lies. You can either be the type of person that plays where you're sticking your block a lot of the time. Or you can be one of those players that uh, is all about the intercepts. And I would say from time to time it's important to look at your intercepts. I will probably use Medusa, but at the same time we've got a 5 star Hyperion. That could be a fun option. Corvus Glaive, bit of an iffy option and I will explain why. And that's after the charges have been depleted then you're going to be waiting a little while in order to ramp up those crits. So you may want to kill off your Corvus, and then it's a case like exiting out, putting the revive on, and then going back in again. And that may be like a rinse and repeat method that you use, or you can use certain champions like Cat Marvel Movie, Medusa, Hyperion, or really strong type of cosmic-based champions to take on this content with. Now, if you've got plenty of experience from going up against Sentinel in Alliance Quest, then this should be a relatively uh, big walk in the park, especially considering, is it easier to keep him up at his L1? Possibly. Is it a case that you're better at avoiding the SP2? Maybe. But that's the thing. You need to decide on your ability whether or not you are and have the capabilities to easily take down this Sentinel. There we have it. That has been the video. That has been looking at getting an easy clear of Cavalier and hopefully this does help. Yes, it's very champion specific, but I have included as much champions from 2019 into the mix as obviously this event has now gone a year now. A year with Act 6.1. Incredible. But yeah, thank you again. For watching this video and just quick tips will be make sure to cultivate a strong roster maybe a lead champion maybe some other options as well or making sure that you separate out the rank up so they're good enough do some variants and then come back to act 6.1 for the massive kind of push to be cavalier make sure you've got a thousand units make sure you save back your boosts in order to make this as easy as possible save your revives if you're being a little bit careful with your free-to-play grind and obviously 
good luck with that. Yeah, massive thank you for your support for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe. Come by to a live stream on my second channel. Link is in the description. And uh, yeah, see you all soon. Hope the guide helped. Bye.